I recently posted a video about this ShopMade tensile tester, and if you saw that video, you'll remember that I had a lot of trouble getting the test specimens to break the way I wanted them to. They kept breaking through the hole rather than breaking down here at the necked down area. Now that video generated a lot of comments, and some of the comments were really useful things like pointing out that I was learning the hard way things that other people already knew, which is true. But that's also how I often learn things, and it's a really great way to learn things by getting your hands on and finding out what works and what doesn't, especially with something like this where the cost of failure is pretty low and the value of the lessons learned is pretty high. But some of you also had some really great suggestions about how to do it better, and no fewer than four of you actually sent me CAD models in email. So, that is fantastic. Thank you for all the great ideas. I actually implemented kind of a combination of those ideas and we'll give it a try today and see if it's any better. I mean, I hope it's better. Hope you guys don't let me down. The problem that I was having last time was getting the test specimens to break where I wanted them. I wanted them to break in this narrow section in the center of the specimen, but they kept breaking through the eyelet in the end even when I added a lot of additional material. I mean, the amount of material on one side here is significantly more than the material here in the center where I want it to break, yet it was still breaking through that eyelet. And you can kind of see a little bit on this part why that was happening. If you look closely at this, you can see the lighter colored plastic here adjacent to the hole. And that lighter colored plastic, this is a ABS, and that lighter colored plastic is where the material was stressed, where it was actually stretched. And you can see that it's stretched right next to the hole, and there's very little going on out here. So all this additional meat that I added to the part, especially on this one, that's out here much further away, it's not really doing anything because all the force is being carried through the plastic right next to the hole. And the reason that's happening is because this material is not perfectly rigid. I mean, no material is. So we start out with a part that looks like this and has a hole in it. And this part was printed vertically, so you've got layer lines across the part that form you know, weak areas. Now you also have those layer lines down here at the bottom, so this is where I expected it to break but instead it's breaking here. Now if the material across the top of this part were perfectly rigid, then when we pull, that force would be distributed all along this layer line. But of course the material is not perfectly rigid because nothing is perfectly rigid. So instead of being rigid in this direction, it starts to flex and pull. So as that is being pulled, it starts to bulge, and I'm gonna exaggerate this just uh, to make it easier to see. But as that force is being applied to the hole in this direction, this is gonna stretch, and the sides of this are going to start to open up. Because the material out here isn't carrying much of the force because this is bending. Because that's bending, it's relieving the force out here on the edges, and it's all focused in the center, and eventually, one of these points right next to the hole is gonna fail, and then it's gonna suddenly unzip, all the force is gonna be released, and the other side's gonna tear off at the same time. And you can kind of see that in the cross section of this part as well. You can see the stressed plastic right here next to the hole. It finally started shooting out in this direction, and then the whole thing just fractured along the layer line. There wasn't time for this plastic to be pulled and stretched. There may be some marks on the other half of this if I went and found it but that the shattering just happened suddenly and just ripped off both sides. But the, the failure was happening right in the center and it's happening because of the flexibility of the material. Now, if I built a whole bunch of material up on top here to back that up, would that have made it better? It probably would have made it a little bit better, but this material in here would get compressed and you'd have that same, that same situation. And so I don't really think adding more material on the top or adding more material on the sides here was ever gonna help. So the solution that many people suggested was to get rid of the hole entirely and either just go to clamps, which I, I know I could go to clamps, I know I could machine them, I was really trying to do this simply, or to go to some kind of a keyhole slot or a wedge style holder. So dispense with the hole entirely and instead just build a clamp that fits around and holds this. 
The idea being that then you're spreading that load across this entire surface and it's not all focused on one point. Now if this were perfectly rigid, like if this were metal, then I think as this starts to pull, the stress would build up in these two places. But I think as long as this is flexible, because I'm gonna print it from carbon fiber nylon, it'll actually conform to this. I'll make the sample fit that as closely as I possibly can. But if the stress starts to build up on a point like that, which I'll of course radius to try to prevent that, the material will start to move and the bearing will actually move up and spread out across this entire piece. Hopefully that will be enough to cause this to fracture down in the neck down region of the sample, which is what I want. I want them all to break like this. But let's design something and see what happens. There were lots of really different ideas that came in from viewers and in the forum discussion for patrons. And this is one of them that I kind of liked. This is the test bar that's very similar to the specimens that are used for testing metals. And if you print this vertically, this would actually work really, really well. You've got a nice wide base for it to sit on the bed, build up nice taper, very little overhang. And the thing that I really like about this is that you can grip it around the entire circumference and that really spreads out the force so that the material is much less likely to start to deform and fail at the point where it's clamped and force it to break down here in the neck down region. The thing that I'm not super excited about with the round model is that I also want to print horizontal samples to compare to the vertical and I'd really like to use exactly the same geometry and printing this horizontally is much more difficult because it would require support material underneath here or some crazy overhangs and bridges. Either way, that's going to introduce imperfections in the surface of the plastic, and I think those would be stress risers that would cause it to fail prematurely, and I would think I would get really inconsistent results from that from sample to sample. So while in general I really like this design, I don't think it's suitable for what I'm trying to do. The other suggestions that came in were some variation of this, kind of an hourglass shaped component and some kind of a clamp with a slot that it fits into. Uh, there were some that had round ends, there were some that had this hourglass shape, and I particularly like this one because the clamp introduces a shoulder so that the sample slips down inside and then slides forward underneath that shoulder and that keeps it from popping out the top. And I love this design and this is exactly what I'm going to do. To design my sample I had a few design constraints. I had an idea of how wide I wanted it to be at the big end, how wide I wanted in the brake section, and how long I wanted in the center, but the actual shape of this curve is primarily dictated by not wanting to have an overhang of more than 45 degrees. These are going to be printed vertically. I want to print these on a whole bunch of different printers with different materials so that I can test and if the printer I'm using isn't particularly good at printing overhangs, I don't want to have a big overhang here that's going to introduce defects in the surface finish that would then cause problems and cause it to break prematurely in the grip section. So I set this angle to 45 degrees, and that's what ended up dictating an overall length a little bit longer than 75 millimeters. So this is my version of the clamp. I did add a little bit more meat between the nut and the actual sample pocket just trying to add some strength here because I think the primary failure mode of this clamp is going to be for these sides to spread. So there's a bunch of material that crosses underneath these shoulders that hold the sample. That's going to resist that spreading and then the mass and rigidity of everything here next to the sample and above it are going to help resist that and a lot of those forces are going to be transmitted back into this region so I wanted a lot of material here to help carry that. Now that's not designed based on any kind of finite element analysis or any kind of uh, stress analysis. I could simulate this don't care enough unless it fails and I have to. So I just kind of designed this based on intuition and this is what I came up with. You can see that the sample sits down in here and I have matched this as closely as I can. I believe I left about 0.2 millimeters on each side. That should be enough to account for imperfections in the printing process in creating the clamps and creating the sample, but it shouldn't be so much that we end up not fitting and focusing all of the force on a single point. You can also see that I radiused this edge so that the point where it's going to bear, if there were a sharp bearing point, would be right about here, not out at the end. 
and you'll note that that is above the point where this becomes parallel. So what that means is if the sample snaps at that point, I should be able to look at the broken part and feel this slight change in the width where it starts to get wider before the break. If I can't feel that at all, then I know it broke in the, in the consistent region here in the center and it didn't break due to the influence of the clamp. One of the things that I mentioned in the last video is that you're not really supposed to use a vise like this pulling on the jaw and putting a lot of force on it. It's really designed to deliver force when closing the jaw. I got away with it, but it's really better if you reverse the nut so that the nut is pulling on the vise jaw in the way that it was intended. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You can see there's a little kind of a half sphere pad in here and there's a hook on the front of the nut that's designed to actually push forward and pull the vise down simultaneously. And when you're actually pulling, this little pad right here on the back bears against this set screw with a spring, this set screw with a spring, and that's where the force is actually being applied to open the jaw. It will bottom out and it will actually pull as you saw, but it's not ideal. Now to actually get the nut out, we have to remove this little plate and it's held in by a couple of little clips here. Okay, now we should be able to put this on the correct direction. Ah, there we go. There we go, perfect. Well, with the new parts all set up in the mill vise and with my new test specimens printed out, well, let's actually break something. So this should drop down and then when I pull it open, it should get captured underneath these shoulders. Make sure we're set to Newtons, set to peak. Zero it and the other comment that I got a lot about was about the update rate on this uh, force gauge. And all those comments are correct. The update rate on this is really, really slow. So what that appears to mean after going back and looking through the other video, I kind of kicking myself for not noticing this the first time around, whatever it was reading from the last update when the specimen breaks ends up being the peak value. So a much higher refresh rate would be better for actually capturing the peak value, but this is what we have to work with. So to deal with that, I'll just pull more slowly 
so that the update rate will be closer to the peak value. And for a quick and dirty test, that should get us close enough. Okay, got that in there. It's loose, we're at zero. When I put some force on it, we start to see the force pile up. I loosen it. Let's zero it. And let's start to pull. The biggest thing that I'm worried about is will these clamps actually hold or will they stretch out? Will the specimen sink in as that expands and jam? Will it just break at the new point here where the force is? I don't know, let's find out. I'll just crank slowly and we'll see what we get. And that actually looks pretty good. It didn't break up here on the shoulder where it's being held. It actually broke down here at the narrowest part. That is what I wanted, 1,082. Let me write that down. And let's try another one, see how consistent it is. That looks good, broke at the same place. And most importantly, it broke at the narrowest point. I'm not actually gripping it all the way down there. I was afraid it would break up here where the grip was touching it, but it didn't. And there's no flare here, so we definitely broke on the narrowest section there. Got 1134. Again, let's break another one. Okay, nice and slow. Eleven thirty-four. That is actually exactly the same as last time. Wonder if there's a quantization limit on this machine. Eleven sixty five. Again, we're definitely breaking in the right place. And the last one of five. Actually, you know what? Let me flip this around because they're all breaking at the top here, but the top is where the overhang was because they were printed this side up. You can tell this is the part that was on the build plate. So let me flip it around. And I suspect it'll break on this end now rather than that end because I think in the overhang, there were some very slight stress risers. Well, no, it's breaking below that. So I'm not sure. I'll flip it around anyway. Oops. Zero the meter, okay. Ten eighty two, and that broke even further down the neck. That's exactly what I wanted. That is five out of five. Excellent. Okay, so we look at the values we got: ten eighty two, eleven thirty four, eleven thirty four, eleven sixty five, ten eighty two. I think there's definitely some quantization going on here, but those are pretty consistent. I'm happy with that. I can't complain for the amount of time and effort I put into this. And I'm pretty impressed with these carbon fiber nylon parts. I really debated whether I wanted to post that last video. It kind of ended in failure as far as I was concerned with these parts failing in the wrong place and me not really being able to get the kinds of numbers that I wanted from a tensile tester. And I thought seriously about just not posting it all, pretending it didn't happen, you know, skip that video and just move on to something else. But you know what? I'm really glad that I posted it. Even though I knew I was gonna get criticism in the comments, what I also knew is that you are all very smart and I was gonna get some very good suggestions 
from some very intelligent and very helpful people. And that is exactly what happened. So I'm glad I posted it. I learned some things. This new design I am very, very happy with. I think this is gonna work moving forward. Obviously I need to put some more testing on these, get some more force on them, which I now feel confident doing now that I've got this vice jaw reversed. Hopefully I will remember that that jaw is reversed before I try to mill something. But I am really pleased with this outcome. It didn't all go, progress is not always in a straight line, but we got there and I am happy. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and maybe think about supporting the channel over on Patreon. Again, some of the suggestions I got came directly from patrons. Some of the CAD models I got came directly from patrons. And this is only possible because of all of you who helped to support the channel in that way. Thank you for watching.